In this video, I set out to create a cinematic performance capture scene in Unreal Engine using some of the cheapest tools on the market. But while these tools might look good for short TikTok dances or action shots, I wanted to find out if they could actually be used for an actual performance with metahumans. So I'll be using QuickMagic AI, a mocap solution that can get full body and hand animation from a single camera of any kind. And for the face animation, I'll be using our trusty metahuman animator. But this time there's a catch. I'll be using an Android phone instead of an iPhone. Thanks to a $20 plugin called Face Depth Frame Mancer, MetaHuman Animator can now be used with any kind of camera. This rapidly evolving technology is lowering the barrier to Unreal Engine filmmaking like crazy. So if you're looking to get started as quickly and cheaply as possible, this one's for you. One dark morning in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. A deaf man heard the noise and came to kill those two dead boys. If you don't believe my story's true, ask the blind man in the corner. He saw it all too. All right, thanks for watching. Before we get started, I want to mention that this video is not sponsored in any way by any of the companies mentioned. So that said, let's jump right into using Quick Magic. So this actually ended up taking me a few takes to get a capture I was happy with. This is just the reality of using these entry level tools at this current stage. So really try to give yourself the best conditions for the best capture possible. I actually found that having the camera handheld rather than static on a tripod seemed to give me the most stable animation with the least amount of jitters in the hips. No idea why, but I ended up getting one I liked on the first take of doing it handheld. And I mean, look how good the hand animations are right out of the box. And this is one of the cheapest solutions I've found yet. This costs about $2 worth of credits and took about 10 minutes to process with their paid tier, which is $10 per month. As I mentioned, this video is not sponsored by them, uh, but I do have an affiliate link for Quick Magic. So if you wanna try it out and support the channel at the same time, uh, consider using my code below or click here to sign up. Now, there are a few things in this animation that need to be corrected, like a few wobbles of the legs or my phone uh, occluding my face and messing with the head orientation, but that's easy enough to fix in Unreal Engine. So at the same time I was recording the body animation, I was recording the face animation using my Android phone mounted to my head using a head rig from facemotioncapture.com. Now, Full disclosure, I was sent this for free, but I'm under no obligation to say anything about it or even use it at all in a video. Um, I've, I've just included it in this video because there are not a lot of great head rigs that I have found in this price point, uh, which is $100. I normally use the Rococo head rig, which I really like a lot and I would recommend if you have the money, but that's $300 to do exactly the same thing. So. For lack of better alternatives at this price point, I can recommend this one, and I've put a link in the description. If you want something even cheaper, I show how to build your own head rig in my super in-depth budget performance capture tutorial right here. So now that I have the performance capture and body animation processed on Quick Magic, I need to bring the face capture footage into Unreal to process with MetaHuman Animator. Now, I was going to include a whole step-by-step -step tutorial and process on installing and using the FrameMancer plugin, but uh, here's a much more in-depth tutorial on it from the developer himself. Keep in mind the plugin costs $20, but that's a lot cheaper than an iPhone. Basically, you import your footage into Unreal and using FrameMancer, extract the frames from the video. FrameMancer will then use AI to create a depth map for each frame. The frames and depth maps are then combined to create a capture source, which is then used in the normal MetaHuman Animator workflow to create the face animation. And it really is that easy. The plugin adds just a few clicks to an already very simple process for getting incredible face animation. Now, I would say I'm not getting quite as accurate of a capture as when I use my iPhone 13, but this is still very good, probably 90% of the way there. And the, uh, and the developer just added a brand new camera calibration function that I didn't do, um, but will probably increase the accuracy beyond what you are seeing here. I ended up uh, doing a few small tweaks to the animation to make it pop just a little bit more, which I'll show later in the video. Also, one important thing to keep in mind if you are using this plugin, 
Uh, do the face capture and MetaHuman animator process as the very first step in your project, before you even add a MetaHuman to your project. I'm not sure why, but I kept crashing while processing the animation unless I was doing it in an empty project. Next, I'll download and add a MetaHuman to my project and then import my animation from QuickMagic. Then it's super easy to retarget the animation for MetaHumans, which you can do using the Animation Retargeter. Now I can get the animations onto a MetaHuman into a level sequence. And this is looking pretty good considering the cost of the tools we're using but it's definitely missing something that will make it way more interesting to work on, and that's a voice that actually fits the character I'm animating. So to morph my voice using AI, there's no better tool than Eleven Labs, which I have used a bunch on this channel. Marvin, Marvin, come in. Are you seeing this? Apologies for the wait. Had to take care of some food droppers. <laughs> You just upload the clip of your dialogue that you want to morph and select the voice you want to change it to. One dark morning in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. So if you want to morph your voice like this and support the channel at the same time, uh, please consider using my affiliate link here or in the description. So to take this animation to a more cinematic level, for lack of a better term, I decided to use some high quality assets from Fab. I used this amazing medieval village from the Scans factory, and I just kind of scouted it around until I found an area I thought would look good. And I had this asset in mind when I thought of the video, especially because it had this darker lighting scenario that had great atmosphere with the volumetric fog and small fires throughout the scene. And for the character's clothing, I went with the medieval clothing pack from Polyphoria, which I think is some of the best medieval and fantasy style clothing for metahumans on the market. Now, once the character is in place and added to the sequencer with animations, I like to get a camera up and the shot framed as soon as possible. So to keep the camera focused on the character, I attach a small sphere to her head bone in the sequencer. I make it invisible and then I add a camera. And for the most cinematic camera settings, I like to set the film back to 35 millimeter Vista Vision, and then set the crop to 16 by nine. Then set the focus settings to tracking and select the sphere under the actor to track. Now I can keyframe the camera movement however I want and the character will be in focus the entire time. I also added some handheld camera shake, which you can do by creating a camera shake based blueprint component. In here, you can change these parameters to change how the camera moves and how intensely. So set the, uh, set the duration to minus one to make it generate a continuous shake without stopping. You can then add it to your camera in the sequencer and drag it out for the length of your timeline. Now, I ended up changing these settings as I went, so here are the ones I uh, used to get my camera to move how it does in the final animation. And before I go any further, remember to set your sequence to 24 frames per second. That's what, that's the frame rate that uh, films use. So if you want your animation to look more like a movie, set it to 24. It's probably at 30 frames per second as the default. Now for the lighting, I wanted it dark, basically nighttime, and wanted the fire next to her to be the main light illuminating her face. So to kind of supplement the, the fire, I added a spotlight from the angle of the fire uh, to make the firelight hit her face better. And I deleted the skylight from the scene to make the shadows darker. And I played with the exponential height fog settings uh, quite a bit to get the color to look more like nighttime. Uh, the directional light was angled and colored blue to look like the moonlight and give her an edge light from behind. And then the lightning is actually just another spotlight that's really bright. And then I've added that to the sequence and uh, activated and deactivated that based on when I want the lightning to show up. And here I'll show the few tweaks I did to the animation. I baked the face animation to the face control board, then added an additive track to the face control track, where I can make non-destructive edits and add keyframes and make adjustments to the, to the whole performance of the face. In this case, I felt the crazy wasn't really coming through in the eyes, so uh, with the additive track selected in the sequencer, I can then select the eyelid tweaker in the control board and just open the eyes more. For the hands, I didn't have to do much since the capture was so good. Uh, I just had to rotate the thumbs around, which I think is an error with the retargeter. 
I mean, this hand tracking is just incredible. Better than Move Pro for sure. I also corrected the eye line to look exactly at the camera, which can be done using a constraint, but since I was bouncing between multiple cameras, sometimes it's easier to just add some keyframes and call it a day. And of course I corrected the head orientation where the tracking didn't quite get it right. Now, I really wanted to get a good rain effect going since I thought the lighting on the wet skin would look a lot better and would add to the ambiance. To achieve the effect, I actually used two different rain assets from Fab, this animated rain material and Easy Rain by William Fauché. Easy Rain was used for the actual raindrops and the animated rain material was used to create the wet effect since it was easy as just dragging the box into the scene and it overrides all the materials, including the metahumans. And what I think really is the cherry on top here is the dirt mask I applied to each of the camera angles. I just downloaded a couple images of water and dirt on camera lenses and applied them to each camera's dirt mask slot. One thing, you have to input a higher number to get it to show up. Just dragging the slider all the way up doesn't seem to make the effect visible, at least not enough for what I was going for. And then really the, the lighting is uh, then crafted and shaped for each individual shot. Um, I add new lights to the scene to help the light wrap better from a different camera angle and hide other lights that were used in other shots. In this case, I'm using two spotlights to help accentuate the firelight and the moonlight, since the spotlights have a nice hard light that will create nice shadows and make the wetness pop more, and their direction and spread can be easily controlled. And the nice thing about Unreal Engine is the lights themselves are invisible, so you can put small dim ones really close to the character to help get the effect you want. And as a general guideline, I try to light the character from the side. Uh, and I'm using some basic color principles and using complementing colors like orange and blue, which look good and feel motivated by the fire and moonlight. So there you have it. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, could you see these tools being used to create a whole short film or even more? Um, if you have any questions about the process or just want to chat more about Unreal Engine filmmaking, uh, stop on by our Discord, which is growing steadily and is becoming a great community sh to share your work and see what others are working on. All right, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.